Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use TA, the Technical Analysis Library in Python. I got the documentation pulled up here. Um, not a very creative name, but it works. Uh, so all you have to do is do pip install TA, and you'll have this nice library available to you. Um, in the last video, I talked about Supertrend a little bit and uh, the ATR uh, being the first component of that. And uh, we calculated that by hand just to make sure uh, we understood what we were doing. Um, but you don't wanna calculate things by hand. That's what the computer is for. And that's what these libraries are for. They solve these problems for you so you don't have to think about it. But it's helpful to understand uh, what goes on to these in, in these calculations and in these scripts that way you're not just blindly copying things and you can like validate the numbers you're seeing, make sure things seem right. Otherwise, you know, you might, you might end up with some bugs. So uh, this is the technical analysis library in Python. Uh, there's a GitHub page for it where you can check it out. As you can see, like any other technical analysis library provides a variety of indicators and they're broken up into uh, modules. So uh, they're divided by type. So we have the volume indicators volatility indicators, which includes average true range, Bollinger Bands, Keltner Channels, things we've discussed in previous videos. You got your typical trend indicators, like simple moving average, exponential moving average, you got ADX, you got your MACD, and then you also have a momentum, like the a stochastic, relative strength, some oscillators, um, and so forth. So just like any other indicator library. However, uh, I like this one, and the reason I wanna try it is because you know, I, I've talked about this TA lib before, which is very popular, right? And I've also tried out uh, Tulip Indicators and Backtraders uh, Technical Analysis Library. Um, but, you know, they all have their strengths and weaknesses. And now this one's uh, pretty popular, but, you know, there's a couple of weaknesses to it. Uh, the first is that uh, the interface to it is a little weird. You know, see, you can even tell how the uh, functions are named, that, that they're just there's just one big namespace uh, you got these capital letter functions here. And so if you look at the candlestick functions that are built in here, uh, like these pattern recognition ones, uh, you know, it's just called CDL, three black crows, right? And it's not really subdivided well. And, um, and it's also a little bit challenging to install on in different operating systems, right? And so um, it's just not, the interface isn't quite as uh, Pythonic. It's not nicely divided up into uh, classes. So what I like about this one is if you look, um, you can import a class, so it's divided up, so it's divided into like ta.volatility, you can import a Bollinger Bands, and then you just construct your, uh, you instantiate uh, Bollinger Bands here, and you just pass it in a data frame of data, and then run a couple of methods, and you're done. So it's very easy to use. Um, so like I said, it's divided up into a number of classes here and yeah let's go ahead and get started uh, using some of them um, so uh, yeah let, let me let me install this first so I have a, a new blank a Visual Studio Code editor and I'm just gonna click open here and I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call it uh, super trend bot okay and I'll post source code shortly uh, so I will open this up and I have an empty folder and I'm gonna have a config.py as usual and I'm gonna put my API keys. So I'm using Binance here. So I'm gonna use my Binance key and I'm gonna set that. And I talked about that in the CCXT tutorial. Uh, and then I'm gonna have like a Binance secret key. And so I'll have that in there and I'll fill that in behind the scenes. So to get started using this technical analysis library, we need to first make sure we install it. So I will uh, get that installed. So I got a command line here and I'm just gonna do pip3 install TA and make sure you have it. And then I'm also going to install CCXT and the schedule package, right? And so once all of that is installed, I'll be ready to do this tutorial. So I'm gonna create a new script called uh, bot.py again. And let's see if we can just uh, import TA, okay? And we're also going to, uh, let's do from, TA dot volatility import Bollinger Band. So we'll take this example right off here and see what we can do. Let's see if we can compute some Bollinger Bands. So in order to perform some type of calculation, we need some data. And so this has some data built in. 
So if you browse the GitHub repository here, and I'll link this uh, below. So there's like a test folder and under data, they provide some, some test data that you can use, but I don't really wanna use this test data, it's super old. So this looks like data from 2010 for like a month, right? So I'm, I'm interested in what's going on now. We wanna make some trades now. So uh, let's get some current data. And to get our current data, we can use CCXT, which we just discussed a couple of videos ago. And so I'm going to use that in conjunction uh, with my Binance or Coinbase API key, or if you want to configure a different brokerage, if you use Kraken or one of these other things, feel free to do that as well. So uh, let's go ahead and get that set up. So I'll import uh, CCXT, and then I still have a snippet from the last video. And all we really do is instantiate an exchange. So I'm doing exchange equals ccxt.binance. But, you know, if you want to do ccxt.coinbase, you know, you could do it like that. And then you just need to uh, give it your uh, import config. And my config has my Binance API key and my Binance secret key. And I'm going to fill that in behind the scenes real quick so this actually works. And let me make sure uh, I can actually grab some data. So I'm going to do uh, exchange.load markets and assign that to markets. And let me see if I can actually uh, get some data from here. So I'm going to print markets like that. Okay. And it looks like I got plenty of data back. So I know uh, my connection to Binance has been established. So now let me see if I can fetch some data that we can apply this Bollinger Bands indicator to. So I'm going to do exchange dot fetch and there's one called a method called fetch OHL CV and let's see the parameters it just needs a symbol and a time frame by default it's going to fetch the one minute time frame yeah let's let's let it use the default and so let's do ethereum uh, USDT right and then let's see if this works so let's say uh, bars equals exchange fetch OHL CV. okay uh, so yeah so let's do four bar in bars, print a bar. So this should return a list. Okay, and look at that. So we have timestamps and let's see, by default, how many did that return? Um, if I print, print the length of bars. Okay, it returns 500 by default. Um, I should be able to set some additional parameters and I don't really need 500 minute bars right now. Uh, we're going to do an ATR of like 14 or 10 or some number like that. So I'm just going to get the last, uh, let's just get the last 20 minutes, right? And then let's verify this to make sure it's all right. And so I'm going to run this again and let's look at this. Mo so you see, I only have 20 different bars here and the open, high, low, close. And so, uh, let's look at Unix timestamp real quick and it's, what time is it? It's 52 minutes past the hour over here. And if I click that, you see that this is indeed 52 minutes um, after the hour. And then if I go back one more timestamp, you know, that should be the 51st minute, right? And it should go back 20 minutes, right? So this timestamp is the price 20 minutes ago. So looks like indeed we have um, some minute data coming in. And we can also look at, we can look at TradingView is what I use a lot. I'll leave a link below in case you want to sign up. Uh, so uh, TradingView, yeah. So here's the last 20 minutes, so 52 minutes. So I'm going to change to the one minute time frame. And let's see, at the uh, 51 minute mark, you see the high of 1990.32. Um, and you see that 1990.32 right there and then the low 1986.56, and the low here, see that 19, no, 1986.56, cool. So uh, we're all matched up there, so we have 20 minutes of data. So let's first see if we can apply this uh, Bollinger Bands indicator that we imported from TA.volatility. Uh, and just so you know, if I go into volatility, you'll see there's also a class for average true range, uh, Bollinger Bands, uh, you should see, yeah, Keltner channels and so forth, right? And so we imported one called Bollinger Bands, but I could also import average true range. And I'll go ahead and do that now, and we'll use that in a minute, okay? So uh, let's see how we apply the Bollinger Bands, calculate Bollinger Bands 
on these bars that we just fetched from Binance. So the first thing I need to do is create a new instance of the indicator. So I'm just gonna call it BB indicator equals, and then I do new instance of Bollinger Bands. And look at the parameters. All I need is a series of closes, right? This is uh, calculated on the closes, right? And then you give it the time, the period. So by default, this is 20 periods. And by default, it uses a two standard deviations, right? So there's some built-in settings of 20 periods and two standard deviations. So all I need to do is provide it a series of closing values, okay? So how do we do that? So this data at the moment is not in a pandas data frame and you'll notice uh, this Bollinger Bands indicator requires pd.series, so it's a, a, a pandas data frame. So how do we convert this uh, series of data here into a pandas data frame? So I forgot to mention, we're also gonna use a pandas. So I'll add that to uh, my re requirements text and you can also just install it like pip3, install a pandas and make sure you have it. So at the top here, I'll also import pandas as pd. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll say, uh, let's create a data frame. So I'll call it df, and that's gonna equal a pd.data frame. Okay, so data frame. Okay, and we need to just uh, give it some data. So our data is just in bars here. So I'm gonna give it uh, the bars. And then what I can do is specify a list of columns. So what I'm allowed to do here is do columns equals, and I can just tell it uh, what the order of of these. So I can say, you know, I can give this column a label. So all of these timestamps, I'm just going to call timestamp and then I'm going to call that one open, high, low, and close. So I'm making a new uh, data frame from this data and I'm telling it uh, what to label each of these columns. So I'm going to say columns equals timestamp, comma, uh, open, comma, high, comma, low, comma, close, comma, volume, right? Okay, and let's see what that looks like now. So if I print DF, and I'll comment out this indicator. Okay, let's print DF and see what we did. And look at that, just like that, I have connected to Binance. I uh, fetched some open, high, low, close data, just uh, the last 20 minutes of Ethereum. And I converted that list here to a pandas data frame. And it has, you know, uh, this nice index here and then it has timestamp open, high, low, close in a nice, easy to use pandas data frame format. And so now that my uh, indicator here, I've instantiated it and all it really needs is a series of closes. I can just say a DF close just like that. And then on my indicator, I need to call one of the functions that's built in to Bollinger Bands. So let's see what's in here. So I'm gonna jump in here and you just need to call the function you want to run. So uh, Bollinger Bands, if you'll remember, and let's pull some up. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to Indicators and I'm gonna to go to Bollinger Bands and let's put some on there, okay? And so you see Bollinger, Bollinger Bands have um, some parameters here, 20 and two, which are the parameters we already have by default. Um, use the close and the length is 20 and the standard deviation is two. And what this means is there's a moving average here. So a 20 period moving average. And then this upper band here is two standard deviations away. And this lower band is two standard deviations uh, below that moving average, right? And so, yeah, that's what it looks like visually. And so what do we need to do? So this looks like this indicator has different methods you can call on this Bollinger Bands object. Uh, one of them you call to calculate the moving average. So if you just need the moving average, you call Bollinger moving average. If you want the high band or the upper band, you call this me method. If you want the lower band, uh, you call uh, this method. So let's call those and see what happens. So now that I have an instance of this Bollinger Bands indicator, I should be able to do a BB indicator dot and then the name of the method, method uh, Bollinger H band. So Bollinger H band, okay, and let's see if this works. So I'll just say the upper band equals uh, this calculation and print the upper band. And let's see if that works. And sure enough, I have a series of values. So hopefully that represents the upper Bollinger band. 
and then I'll also go ahead and call the other one. So I'll do lower band equals BB indicator dot uh, Bollinger L band. Okay, and then I'll say moving average equals BB indicator dot and it's called Bollinger MABG. So I'll do a Bollinger MABG. Okay. And yeah, why don't we just assign those? So let's just add them to the data frame that we already have, right? And so I'll just do uh, data frame upper band, right? Data frame lower band. And so what we're doing is adding columns and we're just gonna put these indicator values right next to our price data so that's nice and easy to read. And we'll calculate them and store them right in there. And now if I just print the whole data frame, we have this new larger data frame that has our Ethereum timestamps, timestamps, open, high, low, close volume. We have our upper band values, lower band values, and our moving average values. And let's see if these make sense. So if I look at the end here, the most recent uh, minute, you see the uh, high and the low and the close. And so we have this uh, average here of 1989, and the lower band is below by about eight. And then the upper band is above 1989 by about eight. So that makes sense, right? So if I look at this, uh, the most recent data here, you see we have the uh, moving average here. And let me hover over that so you can see. Um, what is that, 19, yeah, 1989. If you see in the top left there, you see it says BB20 close to zero. And so the red line, which is the moving average here, says 1989.80, and then you go up by about eight point something, and it's 1998.46, and you go below uh, two standard deviations and you get 1981.13. And sure enough, that looks very similar uh, to our numbers he down here. Okay, so yeah, looking good. And we don't really need the Bollinger Bands here because we're, we're working with Super Trend, but yeah, I'll just keep that around the source code that I post after this. And so now, uh, since we're actually gonna use the average true range, uh, let's go ahead and do uh, ATR indicator equals average true range, okay? And then this average true range is gonna be of, what, do, what does it need? You'll remember in our calculation, we need more than the close, right? Uh, in the last video, I calculated average true range in detail and we needed highs, lows, and closes, right? And so if you look here in my Visual Studio code, it needs a series of highs, series of lows, and series of closes. And by default, this N is 14, so it uses uh, 14 uh, periods, so it's the uh, 14 period ATR. And so let's give it a high, low, and a close, right? We already have the high, low, and close in this data frame. So I'm gonna do a DF high, comma DF low, and then I'll do a comma DF close, okay? And then now I just call the uh, function, so if I look at this average true range source code, you'll see there's just a function called average true range that you call. And so I call that after initializing it. So I'll do average true range just like that. And then let's set the ATR and let's put that in the data frame. So DF ATR equals ATR indicator dot average true range. And I'll take this print, move it down below and look at that. So now we have an ATR column here and it gets filled in. You'll notice the first uh, 13 of these, zero through 12, right? They're all zero, right? Because it's a 14 period average shoe range. And so we need a 14 periods to actually occur before we have this ATR value. So you'll see uh, at index 13, remember we index starting at zero, you'll see that, see the ATR is 2.53. And you know you can go verify that if you want to, uh, but you see that looks nice. And so we have the most uh, recent ATR value here at the end. And uh, one thing to also note is that, uh, so let's observe these timestamps. So I think it gives us a timestamp even though uh, this candle might not be complete. So you see that ends in 60,000 there. I'm gonna run it again and you see it says 60,000 still, and let's see if it's changed. So see this timestamp, I've run it twice. Um, you see it's the same timestamp, but uh, let's see. So this high here, you notice that it changed 1989 to 1966, right? So there's still some different values here. So this most recent candle is still, 
evolving and it looks like Binance still returns that to us. And so we're not gonna apply our, uh, our indicator to a bar that is not yet complete. So let's say we only care about the bars that are already finished, right? We don't, we don't care about this bar because it's still evolving. We want, only want to use look at closing values for the day, for instance. Let's pretend we're uh, running this on the daily and you know it's still in the middle of the day and we're only interested in uh, after the day closes, right? So how do we filter out this last bar? Well, um, let's say we're doing Bollinger Bands and we want the last 20. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fetch 21 of them and just chop off the last one. So in Python, if you remember, you can access a list by its index. So you can get the zeroth item, the first item and so forth. Or if I want the zeroth and first item, I can do zero colon two, for instance, and that would get, get me you know, the first and second item in the list. So let's say I want all of the items in the list except for the last one. What I can do is just do a colon negative one. So what that says is start at the beginning all the way up till before the last one, right? And so that'll get us um, 20 out of 21, right? So let, let's let's run this real quick. Let me show you what that looks like. So if I run uh, bars here like this, so I'm gonna print the bars again, you'll see how we have that uh, 4,000 one at the bottom. But if I do bars negative one, you'll see it filters out that one. So you see this one ends in 80,000. And so now you see when I run it again with that negative one, it goes all the way up till uh, the last bar that is closed. And so now we have 20 clean uh, bars of data that have all been closed and we're running our indicator only on those closed bars. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this, right? Um, I'll leave the scheduling until the next one when we put it all together, uh, but you'll see um, we're already fetching data from CCXT from Binance and we've learned how to use Python TA to apply uh, some indicators and we've calculated Bollinger Bands and average true range. And in the following videos, I'll show you how to uh, fetch this data, like more and more data, fresh data on a schedule and run these calculations on a schedule. We'll dive more into the super trend indicator and hook it up with some buys and sells. So uh, thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for the next one and we'll keep going.